My name is Deacon Jim, and this is St. Bernadette's in South Los Angeles. Today is Wednesday, January 20th, and let us begin as we always begin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, as we begin our celebration, let us praise our merciful God. Lord Jesus, you came to search out, seek out those who were lost. Lord, have mercy. You came to give your life for the sake of all. Christ, have mercy. You came to gather into one family your scattered children. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. Almighty, everlasting God, who govern all things, both in heaven and upon the earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us come together as we break Amen. open the scripture. We continue reading from the letter of the Hebrews. A reading from the letter of the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem, and priest of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned to him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king, and he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. Later on, we'll hear it called Jeru Salem. Without father, mother, or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if a priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so not by the law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm, you are priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit, the Lord said to my Lord, that's what it says, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power, the Lord will stretch forth from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. You are priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Yours is a princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor, before the day star like the dew. I have begotten you. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath? rather than to do evil, to save life, rather than to destroy it. But they remained silent, looking around at them with anger. He grieved at their hardness of heart. Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
We have two feast day today, both martyrs. The first one is St. Fabian. Fabian became Pope in 236. He was martyred in 250 at the beginning of the Decian persecution. At Saint Cyprian, as St. Cyprian tells us, and was buried in the cemetery of Callistus. <coughs> Our second uh, saint is Saint Sebastian, also a martyr. The martyr Sebastian died in Rome at the beginning of the Diocletian persecution. His tomb, his tomb is still standing at the catacombs on the Appian Way and has been venerated by the faithful from very early times. For those of you sharp-eyed people, you'll notice I'm wearing a red stole today, which indicates a martyr. So that's that story. But let's, great, 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 uh, both martyrs, uh, both very early in the church. You will notice that they sometimes, during the different persecutions, because uh, up until we get into the 300s, almost every single Roman emperor maybe in some cases was worse than the next. Nero, of course, is the famous one, but many of these people had just came up with new ways to torture Christians. But having said that, let's go back to Mark. And we have, again, we have Mark. Now, somebody wants to describe Mark, and remember I said this before, is Mark is a disciple of Peter, and he is not a disciple of Jesus. He's not one of the 12, but he was with Peter in Rome, he was probably saw both Paul and Peter martyred. He himself was martyred, but he's like a cub reporter. I've described him this way before. You know, Peter's telling him stuff and he's writing it down or he's there watching it and writing it down. And you can tell by the way these stories are aligned because you see, we've seen little vignette after vignette after vignette, you know, the, the um, disciples in the field with the wheat and then today with the withered hand. And we see one and... Uh, you know, the, the bread in the, in the um, temple. We, one right after the other, these little vignette stories, you know, constantly showing how Jesus is poking, not, you know, I'm sure intentionally, but, but poking at the Jewish leaders, trying to get them to commit. Because, you know, all of them set traps, but they really don't get into discussions. And this is something that's really quite important. And, and I, I, you know, you have to wonder sometimes, why doesn't one of them ask him a question? Now, there are times when they send them to ask him questions, but they're traps. You know, um, they, they want him to, to make a misstep. And it's not usually them. Remember the young man that says, what are the two, two most important in, in, uh, gospels, or not gospels, but um, commandments? You know, he asks him, what's the most important? What's, what, what must, he asks, what must I do to gain the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus asks him, what are the most important commandments? And he says, you know, to love your neighbor as yourself and to have no other God before me. And he says, go and, you know, do likewise. But he also tells him to give everything away. And so, you know, but we don't have those kinds of conversations here with uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Herodians and all these names they throw around. You can go look up who they are specifically, the priests, you know. Um, but once again, they do not enter into conversation with Jesus. And isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? They sit there and bait traps for him. Or, and he constantly gives them opportunities to open up this discussion. You know, you'll notice a lot of times is he, will, he, he phrases so much of this stuff as a question. Looking around at them, remember he says, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil? He asked him a question. He, in the last two days, Monday and Tuesday, it was the same thing. He asked them a question. And they get irritated because the trap that they baited for him gets sprung on them. But yet, no place do they enter into the conversation with Jesus. And somebody once told me a long time ago, and I don't remember who it was, I think it was a Sunday school teacher, who said, never worry about arguing with God. Now, of course, I thought, God's going to strike me dead if I argue with him. Said, no, never worry about asking God questions. Never saying to him in your prayer, I don't get this. Why are you doing this to me? We hear, we hear some of the great you know, leaders in the Bible saying that. Why are you doing this to me? Why did you do that to my calf? Why did you do that to my wife? You know, constantly. And so I, I tell you, brothers and sisters, it's about this conversation you need to have with Christ. You need to have an ongoing dialogue with him. The people here in these stories we've heard the last three days and probably continuing through the rest of the week 
are stiff, you know, he calls them a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked people, not him, but Moses does, God does. Stiff-necked people who don't enter into conversation, that don't end to, look at our um, political situation right now. Our issues are the, pro and somebody's going to, you know, scream from whatever their side of the aisle right now when I say this, but one of our biggest problems is nobody will talk to anybody. Nobody, can, you know, they, they, they vote based on political parties. They don't vote based on what's right. They don't have conversations. They're always baiting traps for each other. They're always trying to outmaneuver each other rather than trying to figure out what is the right thing for this country, what is going to lead us out of this mess, and so on. And before you go, oh, yeah, well, my party's doing the right thing. Psh, neither of them are. Yeah, I know. I'm, <laughs> did I lose anybody from listening to me? But seriously, we hear that with Jesus today. So often in these readings, you'll hear Jesus ask them a question. He tries to lead them into a conversation and they refuse to answer or they give the wrong answer. So my brothers and sisters, do the right thing. That's what this whole book of scripture is about. Doing the right thing. Do what Jesus asks us to do. Amen. We have opened our hearts and minds to the wisdom of God and the liturgy of the word. Now let us turn to him humbly and sincerely with these common petitions. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Archbishop, Jose, for all the pastors, priests, and deacons of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, that they be blessed with the zeal and courage to proclaim the values and the obligations of our holy religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and representatives on the national and local levels, that their laws and their lives be an inspiration to all citizens by reflecting right reason, and divine revelation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our youth in particular, they be given the encouragement and the guidance they need to resist the immoral and sinful presence of our current pagan culture. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the Lord give us the grace to live in full fellowship with our brothers and sisters of other religions, praying for one another, open to all and open to conversation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially, the, especially those suffering with the COVID virus, the needy, the aged, and the lonely, that they be consoled spiritually by the gifts of grace and also receive care, aid, and loving concern from relatives, friends, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died recently, that they may speedily attain the blessedness of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and for our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and compassion, bless us by granting these common petitions, where we plead to you in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil and deliver us from every evil and grant us peace in our day. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pour upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love and in your kindness, Make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And the Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. My brothers and sisters, happy Wednesday. It's hump day. I'll see you back here tomorrow. God bless.